it was about time that once again American reporters went into battle with the American troops and they did and we got the best pictures and some of the best uh, immediate reporting that we've ever gotten. If Bernstein however means the best maybe he means technologically the best because in terms of the images and the cameras and the speed with which uh, the news could be uh, or the selected film footage could be brought back to the United States was impressive. Embedding was terrible. You got one soup song, one slice of the war. I tend to agree with Helen Thomas. The It was certainly the worst in the sense that the story was always the same. There was no uh, contradiction. There was no second side to the story. The situation now is that Iraq is so dangerous um, that if you are an American reporter who looks like me, um, it's very risky to go out on the streets of Baghdad or Fallujah. So unfortunately what these reporters do is they gravitate to the press briefing rooms inside the green zone and just serve as a conduit for government propaganda. That's not reporting. That's called stenography. Because on the one hand, their physical security depended on the army, which was a very important constraint. And on the other hand, their job security depended on their audience. An audience who viewed them as representing America as much as the soldiers did. Consequently, all their perspectives were distorted. And you could see it in the way they would talk, we, we're going up the road to Baghdad. I mean, there was such a heavy identification with the military units that the press was traveling with, that essentially they became propagandists for those units. When you give up trying to keep a distance saying, we, instead of they, it then becomes Soviet journalism. It's Pravda. Now, did I see a lot of dead Iraqis? No. You know why? Because most of them were killed 40 miles away by rockets that travel 40 miles before they explode or because the unit would be calling in close air support and these people would be killed by planes and by the time we had moved those 40 miles through the desert what we saw were burned out cars burned out trucks burned out tanks every once in a while a body but most of the time the bodies had already been removed so again the criticism is when you're embedded you're not showing the casualties of the Iraqis. True enough. Never saw them. And that's of course the problem with the war in Iraq. We, we reveled in the power of the weapons and we were never shown what those weapons did. There were almost no pictures of civilians and we know they were stacked up in hospitals. Uh, we know this from, from the French press, from the British press, we, don't, we know it from the Canadian press. We don't know it from the American press. The, the Times, at the very end of the war, ran one horrible picture of civilians stacked up, corpses stacked up in, the, uh, in a hospital. But by and large, the American people saw nothing of, of the real face of war. It was just nauseating to watch. It used every stupid cliche I have ever heard about war. Um, it, there, there was no content to the images. When we got, you would get a, an embedded reporter, for instance, and they would get near a firefight, and you would, you know, see some smoke in the distance and maybe hear the rattle of some gunfire. And they would speak about it as if they were sports commentators. Well, I see uh, two tanks coming up here, and oh, look over there. But you don't learn anything about the war. It's, it's, it's this gee whiz bang kind of stuff. Indeed, thanks to the huge means that were put at their disposal, and also thanks to technological advances, journalists were greatly tempted to turn news into entertainment. They don't want the truth. 
They want something that's entertaining, and everybody's guilty of this. CNN, CBS, NBC, PBS Frontline is one of the most flagrant violators of this. Nobody has integrity today in the American media, especially when it comes to war, Iraq, and the ongoing war on terror. They want to entertain the public. Live from the world headquarters of Fox News in New York, this is the Fox Report with Shepard Smith. Fair news, balanced news, now. Saddam, we have a problem. Fox came along and said, we sense an appetite for more conservative coverage, more patriotic coverage. And lo and behold, they've done very well at it. So clearly there was a need for it. Bill O'Reilly is the star personality on Fox News, a radical conservative who doesn't mince his words when confronting a pacifist priest. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that President Bush is doing just what Jesus would have done. He's protecting the American people. Fox News is a movie of a, of a certain world view. And the people that present it, O'Reilly and the rest of those people are, uh, again, playing the part of uh, patriots in, in a movie that is script is being written by Rupert Murdoch and Roger Ailes. Mm -hmm. I mean, Fox News is run by a man named Ailes who, who used to do the promotion both for Reagan and for uh, the first George Bush. A link between and at the bottom of the screen, Fox News lists the national terror alert level as if it were the weather. Today's level is three, which means high risk. Fox News, what a joke. Fox News is an oxymoron to put them together. It, uh, you, know, you, you can't speak of Fox News with a straight face. It's Fox warmongering, totally biased supporters of the Bush administration position. I mean, Fox News is the Bush administration position. Saddam you take shower with the blood uh, with the blood of the innocent Iraqi people on daily basis and nobody talk about them. Fox News uh, Fox News is a channel which favors emotions. And looking at it beyond the political aspect, Fox News in general gives a lot of room to emotions, tears and joy rather than the facts. But it's successful. And because of its success, what you've seen is CNN which used to be a, a fairly responsible uh, network has taken, you know, a page out of the Fox playbook and, and is doing the same sort of uh, irresponsible coverage of, 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 of stories. So the traditional networks are debating this now. And I think are positioning themselves with regard to that by saying we must be even more serious, even more traditional and avoid the tabloid type coverage of the 24 hour news channels. We've got to stick with this philosophy, facts Facts, facts. Facts indeed. But images of real and unquestionable events can also be manipulated. A superb example of this was the raising of Saddam Hussein's statue in the heart of Baghdad. 